I recently watched the documentary, Everyday Sunshine, The Story of Fishbone. It's difficult to describe what Fishbone meant to me when I was younger, how hearing their songs gave me goose flesh, made me feel emotions that I feared, made me think, helped me understand the world around me, and, in all honesty, be a better, more well-rounded person. Because that's what truly great art does. It changes you at your core. Beautiful music alters you at a cellular level. Which, again, is why I tilt my head like a confused dog at people who treat music as something less than important. Fishbone helped me through some very dark times. When I was down, their joy was so infectious it would bring me back to sunlight. They made me feel not so alone in the world, which is goddamned important when you feel isolated from society at large. In my eyes, Fishbone should have been the biggest band on the planet. They were so interesting, original, talented, wonderful. Their first few albums are absolutely life-changing. They get into your head and heart and infuse you with the idea God is real because only creatures of God could have such a profound impact on the world and reach your spiritual side. Note what I said, though. They should have been the biggest band on the planet. They weren't. Not by a mile. Which is fine. Great bands can exist on the periphery of fame. A niche market can provide, if not a lavish lifestyle, then, in the least, a sustainable one. Which is why my heart broke during the documentary, as I saw just how far they fell after reaching the cusp of huge success. There is a smash cut that says, 15 years later, that comes during their peak. The footage transitions from frenzied fans to uncaring bystanders. Singer and saxophonist Angelo gets evicted from his house and has to move in with his mother. The band is showing sleeping on chairs, holding an autograph session in an empty store, playing tiny clubs when they should have been filling, in the least, theaters, and they are shown lugging their luggage through airports like they were the road crew for a bigger band. They are doing everything a band struggling to make it does, not what a band that had been on Saturday Night Live should be doing. The saving grace for my fragile little heart was the fact there was no footage of a manager saying, if I told them once, I told them a hundred times, put Fishbone first and Puppet Show last. Still, the documentary was a cold, harsh reminder that life isn't fair. The world owes you nothing. It doesn't matter how talented you are, how hard you work, how good your product is, or how much kindness you have in your karmic vault. The world can and will ignore you. Nothing is guaranteed, and the consumer population is a fickle, lazy mass of indifference. The documentary spelled it out in plain English. After the album, The Reality of My Surroundings, failed to be the hit the record label wanted it to be, the record company moved on. Sure, the album went to number 49 on the charts and sold more than their previous album, but 49 isn't one, and all the industry cares about is big hits. Big hits means big money, and money is the end-all be-all to everything. Artistry be damned. That's how corporations work. They're not interested in art, they're interested in the bottom line. Is the return on the investment worth it? Maybe if Fishbone had hit number 49 on their first album, meaning they had something to build on, the label would have been more forgiving. But after a handful of albums and a sense of shifting musical tastes by the public, Nirvana and Pearl Jam were about to issue a death knell to anything that came before them, it was time for the industry to chase new trends. And if there's one thing a band as talented as Fishbone didn't do, it was chase trends. After that, everything fell apart. 
The next album fared worse, not better. Original band members and exceedingly talented songwriters left, and a downward spiral ensued. Following that, the next album was heavier, less inviting, with less than quality production values. Even a fan like me found it difficult to maintain a relationship with the music. As much as it embarrasses me to admit it, I got trapped by the twin siren songs of nostalgia and imagination, a mix of what was and what could have been. By the time Fishbone was back to being Fishbone in the year 2000, all momentum was lost. Over a decade had passed since they were the hottest thing on the scene and destined to be the next big thing. And now even the wave of grunge that helped bury Fishbone was long dead, with boy bands and Britney Spears dominating the charts. And what chance does the talented band have with an industry pushing songs aimed at 11-year-old girls? None. You hear the phrase ahead of their time here and there, but in Fishbone's case, it's the absolute goddamn truth. They were above and beyond what anyone else was and has ever done, and the world just wasn't ready for them. They deserved so much better, but life isn't fair. If you're not overly familiar with Fishbone, I absolutely recommend you looking them up wherever you find your music. Start with their very first release and work your way forward. I hope you like what you hear. That's it for this little piece. If you made it this far, thanks for listening. If you'd like to learn more about me, everything is over at NathanTimmel.com. I have a t-shirt store, links to books I've written, and there's a one-hour comedy special you can watch for free on YouTube. Again, thanks for listening. <laughs>